my name is Giovanna Proens and today we're going to talk about union squared donuts of CS50 introduction to database with SQL. In this exercise, we're going to talk about designing the database. So we're going to create our own database. We're going to add the tables. We're going to add the columns with their types. We're going to add the constraints. All right. And the goal for this exercise is to create a database for a the unit square donuts that it's like a shop of donuts where people can buy it. OK, in this exercise, we don't have any source code to download so we need to start our code by creating a folder here that I'm gonna call donuts and we need to create a file called schema.sql so I'm creating in here we don't have any database yet so we're gonna scroll down to the bottom and they teach us how we create our database using SQLite so first I need to change here the terminal so I can find the folder that we are working and then I say yes with this command then we're gonna create a donuts.db file that stores our database okay so this is pretty much what we need to do. Now, let's take a look at each table we're gonna implement, and I will show you some things that I already prepared to make it clear. So let's see the first table that is the ingredient. So we certainly need to keep track out of our ingredients. Some of the typical ingredients we use include flour, yeast, oil, butter, and several different types of sugar. Moreover, we would like to keep track of the price we pay per unit of ingredient, whether it's pound, grams, or others. So let's translate what they are expecting us to do with this sentence here for ingredients. So I created here, oops, I created here a table called ingredients. As we already know, every table must contain a primary key. So it's a unique number that will allow us to identify which row are we working. So I'm going to have a row with ID 1 that will represent butter. And I will have an ID, ID 2 uh, that will represent sugar, for example. Okay, so this way we are able to identify which row in the table we're working with. And it's an integer. Then we need to have the name of the ingredient, like butter, sugar, anything else. The price per unit, and here it's a float or a real, as they mentioned. I put here float, but it's a real that allow us to add our integer or a decimal a number. And we need to have the unit. So how many units do we have? Okay, this is what I understand from it. So, because the unit here, they are telling us that it can be whether pounds or grams. That's why I put text. Okay, so let's create our first sentence. As we saw in the lecture, to create a table, we need to use the word create table and the name of the table. We open it up parentheses and we put under quotation mark the name of the column with the type. Okay, so let's do this together. So create table ingredients and I'm going to have our row ID that is an integer. I'm going to have our name that is a text. We're going to have our per uh, price per unit that is a real and we're going to have the unit that it's a text as we already noticed in this diagram here all right now we need to add one constraint we need to say what is our primary key so we're going to use this sentence here where we say primary key and inside the parentheses we put the name of the row the column that represents the primary key in our case id is the column that is representing the primary key so i just paste this in here okay then after we create this sentence we add a semicolon now let's go to the next one so donuts we will need to include our selection of donuts, past and present. For each donut on the menu, we would like to include three things. The name of the donut, whether the donut is gluten-free, and the price per donut. Oh, and it is important that we are able to look up the ingredients for each of the donuts. Okay, let's translate this into one way we understand. So we're going to create a table called donuts that will contain an ID again, that is an integer. The name of the donut, I'm not so creative, but you can say like strawberry donut. If it's gluten-free, it's true. If it's not gluten-free, we're going to represent as false, so it's a boolean and the price that will be real again. Okay, so let's do this part first. Then we work with the ingredients. So I'm gonna say create table donuts and we're gonna have the ID, oops, ID that is an integer. We're gonna have the name that it's a text. Now let's take a look at the diagram again. Is gluten-free, we need to say that it's Boolean. Okay, so it's, it will be whether true or false. So is 
is gluten free it will be boolean and we need to know the price that it's rio again all right and one more time we need to set our primary key okay so we're done with the tenant now we need to work with this little note in here that they are saying that we should be able to to know all the in the ingredients we had we used to bake our donut so to do that we already have a table donuts and we have already uh, we already have a table ingredients so instead of saying donuts is strawberry use the the ingredient butter done as a strawberry used ingredient strawberry we can combine those informations using the idea of normalization he mentions in the lecture so we're gonna say that the donut with id1 uses the ingredient with id5 for example instead of using the name itself we're gonna use the ids in this case we're gonna have two columns the donut id and the ingredient id for the donut id we're gonna import we're gonna use the id that comes from the donuts table and for the ingredient id column in this table then as ingredients we're gonna import the id from ingredients and when we import the id for from other tables to use in a separate one this means we're working with foreign key so here we're use we're gonna have an extra constraint saying that then id is a foreign key of id from donuts and ingredient id it's a foreign key from id of ingredients okay so let's build step by step i'm gonna create table donuts donut ingredients and here we're gonna have donut id that will be an integer and we're gonna have ingredient id that will be an integer as well we need to set our primary key in this case the primary key we have true because we have the relationship donut and ingredient so to do that let me just double check we're gonna say that our primary key is donut Oops, it's donut ID. The pair donut ID, ingredient ID, because they will be unique. 